Hi everybody and welcome to Dr. Love and AskDrLove.com. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf and this is advice column two for November 5th. It's entitled Going On. I've been through a very mentally and physically abusive, abusive relationship. He said he loved me, asked me to marry him, and then the sweet, kind, loving man changed to jo Dr. Jekyll from Mr. Hyde. He was scary. He had such a bad temper and he would have road rage every time we went somewhere in the car, get out and fight with people, calling them all kinds of names. I would leave his place, then feel bad and call him, and he would never answer. So I went to his house, and he wouldn't answer the dog. She said dog, but you mean door. So I got on my hands and knees to talk to him through the doggy door. As I was talking, he called the police on me to have me taken off the property. I was so humiliated by this man over and over, it goes on and on, but I have finally seen the light and taken as much as a person can take. I've been on my own for one year and I have tried to date, but I don't trust men or I don't like the way they all want to date lots of women to just get what they want. I want someone who wants me and treats me with love and respect. Can you help me to see who is the right one for me and if he is a safe person? Thank you for your time, Dr. Love. Okay. First of all, congratulations for getting free. For freeing yourself, I should say. Now, the fact that you are afraid that you're going to choose another abuser again, not recognize an abuser, is a warning sign that you need to listen to. It's a message from your unconscious mind telling you that you are not safe yet to choose a better partner. Your unconscious knows that there is a pull inside you to abusive partners. And this is not because you're a glutton for punishment, but because we all have the wish to keep returning to the wrong partner in order to replay the wound of our childhood with an ab abusive parent and hopefully get it right this time. If you've been reading my columns for a while, you know about the repetition compulsion that draws us to choose partners who psychologically and emotionally resemble the parents who hurt us and let us down. And so your fear that you can't trust yourself to not spot an abuser is right on because you will keep choosing abusers again and again until you heal the wound. Once you heal the wound, you will spot an abuser miles away and you won't let him anywhere near you. Now, how do you heal the wound? Well, the first thing is I would suggest you just use my relationship rescue kit. It's available now from the homepage of the site. And it includes my book, Till Death Do Us Part, and the Quick Start Guide, Make Up, Don't Break Up, and lots of other free bonuses that are great. Now, Till Death Do Us Part has a lot of sections in it about helping you identify the specific wounds of childhood and then giving you step-by-step -step instructions for how to heal them. And basically, the wound is going to, the healing of the wound consists of you basically giving yourself the love you never got and the approval that you never got as a kid. And since you never got it, it's very hard for you to give it to yourself. So I would recommend that you start some therapy now, either with me or with someone who works like I do. Someone who's not going to give you homework assignments and treat you like a robot. Someone who's going to form a relationship with you, connect to you, and fill the emotional voids inside you and the gaps. And that part of you that begins to get healed, that takes in the therapist that really cares about you, that well that's filled is a well that you're going to draw on and you're going to use to feed yourself, to say kind things to yourself, to love yourself. And as you do, and the wound heals through therapy and then through your own continuing of the loving messages, as you heal, you will see that you're not going to be afraid anymore because you'll know deep down you're not going to choose any abusers ever again. Please keep me posted. Take care.